After I built my table saw fence, I realized that the next thing I need to do for my workbench is a crosscut sled. A crosscut sled is an essential part of any table saw. It makes cross-cutting operations a lot more accurate, cleaner and safer. This accessory is fairly simple to build. You can find the link to the plan for this cross-cut sled in the video description below. I started this project with creating miter slots on the table saw top. The best tool for cutting miter slots is a router. First, I traced some parallel lines that I need to follow with the router and made sure they are square with the front of the table. Then I clamped down two guides that will help me make accurate cuts. So I carefully started routing the sections out. The depth of the slots is 10 mm and their width is 15 mm. I have a bit with 12 mm diameter, so I need to make two passes to get the proper width. The router bit is old and the cut is not very clean, but I made some corrections with a utility knife. Once I'm done with the router, I need to attach the U-shaped aluminum profile into the slots. Before that, I need to check if the size of the slots fits the size of the aluminum profile. They are a perfect fit, so I can cut the aluminum to size with a hacksaw. To attach the aluminum into the slots, I used some countersunk screws because they need to sit flush with the surface of the slots. I pre-drilled holes and drove the screws in, making sure they are all flush with the surface. For the base, I am using 8mm thick MDF and cut it to size on my table saw. Its dimensions are 70 by 50 cm, which is the right size for me. Now let's move on to the runners. You can use metal, plastic or hardwood runners. I'm using beach for the runners, so I'm cutting two identical strips on the table saw, 13mm wide and 8mm thick. When it comes to the width, you should be able to push the runners back and forth relatively easy. Here I need to be careful because these runners should fit in the miter slots without causing any movement. They are cut to size and fit into the slots with no side-to-side -side movement and also they slide nice and easy. The runners need to be flush with or just a little bit under the surface of the table saw top. To attach the runners to the bottom of the base, I need to raise them up using some spacers, in my case washers. They need to be a bit higher than the table top, so when I apply some glue, they will have a good contact. I'll drop these runners on top of the washers, apply a wood glue on them and place the MDF right on top. If you choose metal runners, you can use CA glue in that case. The base doesn't need to be exactly in the middle, and it isn't crucial at this point to have it perfectly square. The goal here is a base that is flush with the runners and with the table saw top as well. Once the glue has dried, I flip it over and drive at least 5 countersunk screws in each runner to secure them permanently. One more thing I need to do with the runners is to cut off the excess length with a handsaw. With that done, I can now move on to the fences. For the front fence, I used 2 plywood strips and for the back fence, I used 1 plywood strip. I cut them to size and attached the back fence. First, I applied the wood glue to secure it well. Then I placed the back fence on the sled and clamped it down. I want the fence to be flush with the edge of the sled, but it doesn't need to be perfectly square. It is here just to support the sled. This fence doesn't need adjustment, so I'll drive some screws in. With the back fence in place, then I just raised my blade as high as it could go, pushed the sled forward and made about 80% of the curve cut throughout the sled. Now let's pay attention to the front fence. It consists of two plywood strips, which I glued together with a wood glue, one 8 cm wide and other 6.6 cm wide, because the fence needs a 21 by 14 mm rivet along one of its edges. That rivet I'll use to install a stop block on it. Using a chamfer bit, I put a small chamfer on the bottom inside edge of the front fence, where it will actually touch the work pieces. With this chamfer, I created a dust channel because I wanted to allow the sawdust to have a place to go when I'm using the sled itself and also I wanted to avoid any inaccuracies. Both fences should be taller than the highest you'll raise the blade, but not too tall because it can be difficult to put pressure on the work pieces with your hands. It is crucial for the front fence to be square to the blade, so first I'll use a square ruler and try to get the fence as 90 degrees to the blade as possible. 
Then I'll clamp it in place, pre-drill and countersink a hole and drive two screws in to secure the fence in place. Here I'm not using wood glue because I might need to make some adjustments. Then I can continue the saw curve completely throughout the whole sled. To fully adjust the sled I'm going to use the 5 cut method. I took a larger piece of MDF scrap, it doesn't matter what size it is. I marked all four edges with numbers from 1 to 4 and started cutting. I made a small cut on the edge 1, then rotated the MDF piece clockwise and made another cut on the edge 2. I repeated this step with the edge 3 and 4 and arrived back at my first original cut that I marked as number 1. So here I'm going to slide my piece more than 2 cm to the right and make the fifth cut. I'm going to take this off cut and measure its width with a caliper. The width of the top is 2.49 cm. The width of the bottom is 2.513 cm. I subtracted the bottom portion from the top and the result is negative 0.023. I divided that by the four angles that are in this rectangle and I came out with negative 0.00575. I took this number and divided that by the length of my fifth cut, which is 36 cm, and got 0.000157. Then I multiplied that with the distance between my pivot screw and where I'm going to make an adjustment, which is 60 cm. In my case, I had a negative 0.009582. In inches, this is a negative 0.00377, which is great. I'm happy with the result and I don't need to make any adjustment here. But if you want to make an adjustment, I'll explain how to do it. If it's a negative number, you need to move your fence up on the adjustment side and if it's a positive number, you need to move it down. The best way to adjust it is with a filler gauge and a scrap of wood. If you need to make an adjustment, you need to drive a new countersunk screw to secure the fence. Don't reuse the old screw hole. To completely secure the fence to the base, I'll drive some more screws on the bottom. I double checked and made sure everything is square and accurate. Ok, now it is time to install a T-track for the stop block. I have a white aluminum curtain track and I cut it to size. Its length needs to match the length of the front fence. I use the CA glue to make a better contact between the track and the fence. After that, I secure the track additionally with some screws. When making cross cuts, the blade is protruding out of the back, which means that I need to make a blade guard. I'm going to make the cuts on my new cross cut sled. So I'm cutting three squares out of plywood using a temporary stop block. Then I'm joining them together with a wood glue and then I'm attaching this guard on the front fence. This block will act as a reminder for me to push the sled from the sides of the block and not the middle when making cross cuts. I decided to make a flip stop block out of plywood. This stop block will make repeated cuts possible. It consists of two parts and it's very easy to make. I made all the cuts on my table saw with the cross cut sled. You can find the dimensions in the plan. To make the first part of the stop block, I'm gluing these pieces together and then I'm removing 12 by 41 mm of it on the table saw. It was extremely easy to remove that area now that I have the sled. On this piece I made two holes because I need to use two bolts, one as a connection with the T-track and the other as a connection with the other part of the stop block. When it comes to the other part, it consists of three small pieces of plywood. I drilled a hole in the smallest one and then I joined all the pieces together. To join them I'm using a wood glue and some screws because I'm going to move it on the T-track all the time and flip it when making cuts, so it needs to be strong. Now I'm attaching the stop block onto the T-track and tighten it with the bolt and the butterfly. Then I'm using a longer bolt to connect the two parts of the stop block together and tighten them with washers and nuts with rubber seal. It works pretty well, it's strong enough and there is no side to side movement. What's left to do is to apply a tape measure on the top of the front fence below the stop block. 
Here you need to take the thickness of the stop block into consideration to determine the starting point of the tape. I used the sewing tape, set my stop block properly and carefully attached it onto the fence with CA glue. This means that I am done with the crosscut sled. I am going to make some test cuts and see how everything works. Now I can use it to make little cuts, I can cut larger pieces and also I can use the stop block to make repeated cuts at a perfect 90 degree angle. Most important, I am protected from kickbacks because it's pretty safe to use. I really like how it came out. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video useful. If you have any questions and thoughts on this project, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.